We've talked about the slope of a line that's tangent to a curve at a given point, but that can become tedious because if we wanted to evaluate the slope of that line at maybe 15 different points along the curve, we would have to generate 15 different limits and solve for them. So in a way to speed that up, what we would like to do is we'd like to find a way that we can represent this derivative as simply a function, that we can compute something that I can just say, instead of, if I wanted to find the value, the derivative at x equals 2, I could just say some function at 2, as opposed to this limit and evaluate and evaluate, blah, 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 blah. And so this is where we came up with this. The idea is, Instead of evaluating f prime at some physical value c, we're going to take a parameter x. We're going to say f prime at it, some number x is f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And then that limit is delta x approaches 0. And so the difference here is instead of evaluating the function with, with like real numbers that you point in there, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate it with symbolically we're going to use x as the placeholder simplify the fraction take the limit and what we'll have is some other f function that's in terms of x so then that function f prime of x will then just be a function I can plug numbers into I can take f prime at 1 I can take f prime at negative pi I can it doesn't matter uh, it, technically these will have a domain so you'd have to watch out you can't just throw any number into it but for what we're trying to do here, the goal is to generate a function that we can plug numbers into as opposed to having to take a limit every single time. And it's also important to note this gives an instantaneous rate of change. So if you re recall from the slope uh, of a line, or when you have a function and you have a change and change here, we can find the total rate of change by taking your last value minus your first value, dividing, dividing it by the length that you went. Think like um, if you wanted to figure out your average speed when you were driving, you would figure out when you started, how far away you were at the end, and then how long you spent getting there, and you could find the average rate of change. What this allows us to do is find the instantaneous rate of change. So I would, if, if I modeled that your actual behavior by some sort of function, I could figure out how fast you're going at the first hour or 55 minutes or something like that. And that's the idea behind the derivative. So there's a number of ways that we talk about derivatives. There's a bunch of notations. And the reason for this is because there was no standard notation when it, this first came about. In fact, there's even another notation here that you don't see unless you take uh, like physics and engineering and it's this x dot notation and that's originally Newton, one of the inventors of calculus who came up with it. Now Leibniz, the other guy, came up with this type of notation and there's a bunch of other ones. So since there was no standard method, a lot of people developed it and depending on which school of thought you came from, those have sort of persisted over time and now they're just so instantiated they really, it's hard to get away from them, but the two most common that you'll see are really these two, and to a large extent that one as well. And this is f prime of x, f prime at x. This one is either the derivative of y with respect to x, or a lot of people will just say dy dx. That's really fast, you say dy dx, or you might say f prime, or you might say y prime. Those are fast. And these are differential operators and blah, blah, blah. And these are a little more fancy if you're trying to do things that are a little more complicated. They make sense. But for our purposes, we're going to stick mostly with these two. And, and we'll probably we'll definitely touch that as we move into things like implicit differentiation. Now, I also want to point out it's very common to see this notation instead of that one. Editorializing, personally speaking, I like this notation specifically because... I can, there are two reasons. One is less to write. Instead of writing delta x, I'm writing h. So I have to write two less letters. The second issue is sometimes it can look like this is maybe two numbers multiplied together, like it's delta times x, but it's not. Delta x is its own quantity. So I like looking at h because it's easier to see that h is its own quantity 
versus trying to piece out whether or not delta x is its own quantity. Technically, it's there from the notation, but I don't like it. So really, I guess it's three letters I save. Anyway, we're going to do some examples of generating derivatives in the general case.